Hello everyone, I am Unsung NPC back here with another class video for you on Pathfinder Kingmaker. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Sorcerer class, the Charisma Caster. Um, so we are going to be taking a look at that and here we go. So as you'll notice over here, we've got our archetypes from the actual game Kingmaker. And then three more archetypes that come from the mod Call of the Wild. It's on the Nexus. If you aren't looking at that yet and haven't heard about it yet, you definitely should um, look into it because it's awesome and amazing and you won't regret it. So here we go. The Sorcerer. The Sorcerers are pretty straightforward. I think the big thing is like even more so than the archetypes is the bloodline. Right? The bloodline is what makes sorcerers different from other sorcerers most of the time. So you have your proficiencies, cantrips, detect magic. You get a bonus feat. And then you get a, another bonus feat. And, um... So at first level, you get a bonus feat that can be a metamagic, spell focus, or any other spellcaster feat. At 7th level, 13th, and 19th, they have to be a feat from your bloodline list of feats. So each bloodline has a list of bonus feats that you pick from for those bonus feats. Alright, so we're going to be taking a look at those bloodlines. Um, let's actually take a look at those now, before the archetypes. Uh, okay, so we have the Abyssal Bloodline. So you've got your powers and your bonus spells, okay? Your bloodline arcana and then your class skill granted by the bloodline. So bloodline arcana is that when you cast a summoning spell, um, the summoning, the creature summoned gain damage reduction good equal to half your level, which is pretty awesome. And then you gain athletics as a class skill um, you also gain Claws, Demonic Resistance, so Electricity Resistance 5, and a plus 2 on saving throws against Poison, and then eventually it increases to 10, and your saving throw becomes plus 4. You gain plus 2 bonus to Strength, and then plus 4, and then plus 6. You can cast, whenever you cast a summoning spell that conjures more than one creature, you add the um, one more creature to the total and then you gain immunity to electricity and poison and resistance to acid cold and fire for demonic might so the abyssal bloodline works well for strength based sorcerers in my experience um, I do think the strength based sorcerer abyssal bloodline is a super fun build to play but that's definitely what it's catering towards so you can focus on like a summoning build if you want, but still being a strength based sorcerer would be also great here because of the spells that benefit and the powers that you get and the bonuses to strength and all of that. You also get Cosphere, Bull's Strength, Rage, Stone Skin, Dismissal, Transformation, Summon Monster 7, Unholy Aura, and Summon Monster 9. And that is the Abyssal Bloodline. Next is the Arcane Bloodline. So the Arcana is that whenever you apply a meta magic feat to a spell that increases the slot used by at least one level, um, increase the spell's DC by one. So basically, if you use a meta magic feat that makes it to where it increases the level of your spell, you also get to increase the DC of the spell which is actually really cool. And then you can add any knowledge skill to your class skills. And then you get Arcane Bond, which is awesome. It can either be a familiar, which are always nice little skill bonuses, or it can be a bonded object, which allows you to like regain a spell slot, which is awesome. <laughs> you get Metamagic Adept. Um, so 
You can apply any one mad magic feat you know to a spell you are about to cast without increasing the casting time. You must still expend the higher level spell slots. You can use it once per day at third level and then one additional time per day every four levels up to five times per day eventually. And then at 20th level, this ability is replaced by um, the 20th level ability. New Arcana, at 9th level, you can add any one spell from the Sorcerer or Wizard spell list to your list of spells known. Has to be obviously one that you can cast. And then you get 13th and 17th level, you get to increase, you get to add one more spell each of those times. School Power, pick one school of magic, the DC of that school increases by one. This stacks with spell focus. That's huge because spell focus and greater spell focus already increase the DC by one each of those times. And now you get to increase the DC again. So I feel like the arcane bloodline is so good for focusing on a specific school of magic. Um, particularly, I think conjuration works out really well. Um, for Sorcerer Arcane Bloodline. I love the Arcane Bloodline a lot, but there's an archetype that I find to be a little bit better. But the Arcane Bloodline is great if you still want to be a Charisma-based caster. Right? Uh, and then you get Arcane Apotheosis. Apotheosis. How do you pronounce it? Your body surges with Arcane Power you add any magic magic feats you know to your spells without increasing their casting time. Any mad any meta magic feat. Bonus spells include magic missile, invisibility, dispel magic, dimension door, overland flight, true seeing, banishment, power word stun, and clashing rocks. So, very fun uh, bloodline in my opinion. Next, we have the Celestial Bloodline. Again, I think there's an archetype for this that works better. Um, there's an, or I mean, there is an archetype for this that I think works better than this Bloodline specifically. But if you want to remain Charisma-based, then you stick with this one here if you like this. So, Bloodline Arcana, it's the same as the Abyssal, except it's DR Evil instead of Good. So, adding... DR to your summon spells. Uh, and you add religion. You get heavenly fire. You can unleash a ray of heavenly fire as a standard action, targeting any foe within 30 feet as a ranged touch attack. Deals 1d6 plus 1 point of damage for every 2 levels you possess. The damage is divine. The ray heals good creatures of 1d6 points of damage plus one for every two levels so you can heal or hurt um you, neutral creatures are unaffected and you can use it a number of times per day equal to three plus your cruise and modifier five acid resistance five cold resistance both become ten you gain wings right Conviction, so you gain spell resistance from evil spells or spells cast by evil creatures, equal to 11 plus your level. And then you get Ascension, so immunity to acid, cold, and petrification, electric resistance 10, fire resistance 10, and a plus 4 bonus against poison. Honestly, not as good as the demon one just because these immunities like acid and cold are so not common in the game so it's just kind of like yeah bless resist energy protection from energy remove curse flame strike fantastic spell by the way Dis greater dispel magic banishment sunburst summon monster nine and that's the celestial dragon so the dragon is going to be the same for each dragon the difference is going to be the type that they use so black is acid blue is electric brass is fire bronze is electric copper is acid gold is fire green is acid red is fire silver is cold white is cold 
So they all have their own types. All right. Either way, you gain the ability to grow dragon claws. You gain dragon resistance. So five resistance to the element of the dragon plus one natural armor. Then it becomes 10 and two. And then your natural armor increases to four. You get a breath weapon for your element. You gain wings. And then you gain power of worms, which is immunity to paralysis, sleep, and whatever element you chose. And then you gain blind sense within a range of 60 feet, which is actually really nice. I think that if you take like fire, a, like a fire type dragon, then I feel like that ability is really, really good because fire damage is probably the most common elemental damage. Electric can also be good. Don't waste your time with cold, ever. Acid, I don't know, is pretty niche, but don't even bother with cold. Seriously, don't. The Arcana is that any spell you cast with the related element gets plus one point of damage per die rolled. And then you gain Perception as a class skill. Um, and you gain Mage Armor, Resist Energy, Fly, Fear, Spell Resistance, Dragonkind 1, 2, and 3, and Overwhelming Presence. Dragonkind is actually dope. Um, being able to turn into a dragon, A+. Honestly, lots of fights won because I had people turning into dragons or giants or whatever. I Transformation spells are my favorite. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Honestly. Honestly. Next is the uh, Elements. The Elemental Bloodlines. Again, all the same except for the different type of element you're looking at, right? Obviously. Uh, class skill Mobility. <clears throat> no Arcana here. Uh, because it's an Elemental Bloodline, I think there's no like Arcana. Because I think the Elemental is like a little bit different than regular. You get Elemental Ray. So for whatever type... You do a ray that does 1d8 points of damage plus 1 for every 2 sorcerer levels. You gain elemental resistance, 10 and then 20 of your element. Um, elemental blast, 20 foot radius burst that does 1d8 points of damage per level. Um, and if your creatures fail the reflex save, they gain vulnerability to the element, which is... which. They take increased damage if they're vulnerable. That's crazy. So you can use it once per day, then twice, then three times, and it has a range of 60 feet. That's actually awesome, to be honest. Uh, elemental movement. So each one has like a different movement, I think. Yeah, so like... Fly. Immunity to combat maneuvers. Plus 30 feet to your base speed, which is nuts. Immu immunity to combat maneuvers. And then you gain elemental body. So you immunity to sneak attacks, critical hits, and the elemental damage. Your spells are Burning Hands, Scorching Ray, um, which turn into the element that you have, which is actually really freaking cool. <laughs> um... Protection from energy, elemental body one, two, three, and four. And then you have summon monster eight. And then elemental swarm is one of my favorite conjuration spells. It summons two D it summons uh two D4 large elementals, then one D4 huge elementals, and then a greater elemental, which is just insane. I love elemental swarm so much so much i love it and those are the elemental bloodlines the fey bloodline also a really good one i feel like there's also an archetype for this one and there's an archetype for the elemental ones which we're we're gonna go over those um so arcana compulsion spells dc increased by one great if you're trying to do compulsion and enchantment magic absolutely and then nature is a skill. Laughing touch as a melee touch attack. Um, I don't know. I don't know about touch. I all these weird spell powers that are touch attacks. I'm not a big fan of because 
it means that you need to be a strength sorcerer or you need to take weapon finesse as a feat and having to take weapon finesse when you're a caster is pretty crap in my opinion but you know it is what it is woodland stride fleeting grace uh this ability functions as greater invisibility for a number of rounds per day equal to your level okay cool fey magic plus two on caster level checks made to overcome spell resistance this bonus does stack with spell pen and greater spell pen which is awesome because <laughs> spell penetration is a big thing late game there are so many enemies that have such high spell resistance being able to penetrate those barriers are like nice soul of the fey immunity to poison dr10 cold iron once per day you can cast cloak of dreams okay wow spells entangle great one hideous laughter awesome deep slumber fantastic poison i love that spell too vine trap greater dispel magic change staff that's interesting oh you change your quarter staff into a treant creature what okay irresistible dance and shape change right functions as like elemental body four form of the dragon three giant form one or two plant shape three lots of different things um yeah i i all these weird looking all these like weird spells and stuff i, I love that kind of stuff honestly infernal this one i think is one of the worst bloodlines i'm not gonna lie i don't think it's that great but here we go bloodline arcana charm school charm sub school dc increased by one charm not as good as compulsion not as good as compulsion uh knowledge world class skill corrupting touch again with the melee touch attacks again infernal resistance so five fire resistance plus two against poison and then 10 resistance plus four against poison that's actually pretty nice because fire resistance is always great hellfire 1d points of 1d8 points of fire damage per level those caught in the air your blast receive a reflex save for half good creatures that fail their saves are shaken uh, yeah anything that affects good creatures i'm just kind of like eh because i feel like most creatures in this game are evil wings power of the pit immunity to fire and poison and then resistance to acid ten and cold this one's actually good honestly the immunities that the, the infernal bloodline gets is actually solid because resistance to fire and poison nice protection from good eh. scorching ray hold person crushing despair dominate person hellfire ray firebrand power word stun meteor storm uh, spells are okay you can get them with any caster class though i don't know i just feel like as terms of bloodlines this one's just not that great so yeah the serpentine bloodline i actually really like this bloodline because of how kind of unique it is um okay your powers of compulsion can affect even beast creatures so if you use a mind effect in your language dependent effect it affects animals magical beasts monstrous humanoids and vermin that is so good being able to like dominate a creature like that is sick like honestly that's such a powerful ability that's i love the serpent bloodline i love the serpent bloodline and then stealth is a skill which is totally cool serpent's fang i don't really care about the natural fang attack i mean most of these like first powers here at first level aren't that great i really don't care but you can pause if you want to read on what it does you can pause it right there and find out you gain a viper familiar great because it gives you bonus to perception and persuasion very important skills snakeskin plus one to natural armor plus two against poison plus two on mobility and all of those bonuses increase by one at 13th and 17th level I really like that because natural armor, great. Saves against poison, great. And mobility, if and if you want to use that skill, then that's also great. Um, Den of Vermin, love this power, love it. Okay, this power is so good. Um, 
So basically, it acts as Creeping Doom, but the poison that the swarms deal inflicts con damage and um, any creature that sharing, other than you sharing a space with the swarm is entangled. So Creeping Doom, you summons four spider swarms, basically. And it's awesome. And they poison and distract, and now they also do con damage and entangle. I mean, oh, it's so good. Love that spell. And then Scaled Soul. This one's also really cool. Turn yourself into a large spirit naga. And back again at will. You also become immune to poison and paralysis. Both great immunities. You can use the Serpent's Fang as often as desired. And you may choose to inflict damage to any ability score with it. So like, you can literally just be a naga as much as you want. That's just insane. I love it. Hypnotism. Delay Poison, Summon Monster 3, Poison, Hold Monster, Transformation, Summon Monster 7, Irresistible Dance, and Dominate Monster. A cool array of spells, honestly. But yeah, those powers are so strong. So strong. Yes. And then the Undead Bloodline, which I also love. I Anything Necromancy, honestly, I'm here for. No lie. So... Uh, undead Bloodline Arcana. Undead are, succept are susceptible to your mind affecting spells, which is awesome. And then you gain Religion. You get Grave Touch, another Touch Attack, Shakens, whatever, yeah. Death's Gift, you gain Resistance Cold 5 and DR5 Magic, and then it becomes 10 and 10. Gra Grasp of the dead, you cause a swarm of skeletal arms to burst from the ground and rip and tear at your foes. 20 foot radius, 1d8 points of slashing damage per sorcerer level, reflex for half, those who fail are unable to move for one round. Awesome. Incorporeal form, one round per level, uh, you take no damage from non-magic weapons. You also only take half damage from any source not dealing ghost, holy, divine, or force damage. That's also awesome. Uh, one of us. Your form begins to rot. You gain immunity to cold, paralysis, and sleep. Paralysis and sleep, I will take those immunities any day. You gain DR5 flat. And then you gain, uh, you receive a plus four bonus um, saving those made against spells and spell-like abilities cast by undead. So, another solid power. Cause fear, false life, vampiric touch, animate dead, waves of fatigue, undeath to death, finger of death, horrid wilting, and energy drain. So, if any of the spells that I've looked at in any of these bloodlines you want to like kind of read on what it does, feel free to pause the video at any of those times. But now we're going to get back into the archetypes, so I can kind of explain what I was talking about before. So, for example, the Imperial Sorcerer is like the Celestial Bloodline, except you use Wisdom instead of Charisma, and some of your stuff is a little bit different. Um, so, these two are the same, but you gain Channel Positive Energy um, instead of whatever power, instead of uh, whatever power that was before. So that changes. Um, nothing else changes though. Same spells, all that. It's just, it allows you to use wisdom. Sylvan Sorcerer is like the Fae Bloodline, except you get an animal companion, which is pretty sick. Um, and this power, nope, all these powers are the same. You just, you lose your first power and gain an animal companion instead, which people would argue is a big trait, is a good trade off. Like, if you're gonna do Fae stuff, being a Fae Bloodline regular sorcerer is not nearly as good as being a Sylvan sorcerer and getting an animal companion. Sage sorcerer is like the Arcane Bloodline, except you get, um, you get to use Intelligence instead of Charisma. Um, yes, and so some of this stuff is different, and then you get Arcane Bolt as your first ability, which is just like a bolt of force damage. Um, Bloodline Arcana It says... Oh, okay. 
you gain plus two on all knowledge arcana skills yeah knowledge arcana all right primal sorcerer is the elemental one i was talking about you pick an element and uh it's pretty much the same wait i think the difference is the elemental is summoning and you get these uh it tells you like your bonus feats and then you get bloodline arcana no we have that before actually ability okay yeah so this is the difference here whenever you summon a creature it gains resistance 10 against the energy that matches your type and its natural attacks deal an extra 1d6 points of damage to the same energy type so that's pretty awesome cross-blooded is where you get two bloodlines okay so i want abyssal and celestial and then uh you get all the stuff uh, there's drawbacks so you always have a minus two on will saves um, and then each time you get to these points you have to pick which power you want uh, I don't believe you get both powers you have to pick from the two bloodlines so you can mix and match powers so this works for like some bloodlines that have like some powers that are good and some that are not you could do a mix of those and then pick your powers where you want them which I think is really cool. I like that a lot. And then Seeker is the last one. It works a lot like the Seeker uh, uh, Cultist. You get a bloodline. You have Tinkering. So uh, you had half your or Oh, yeah, the Seeker Oracle, not a Cultist, the Oracle. You had half your level on Perception checks and Trickery checks. You have Seeker Lore. So plus four on all concentration checks, caster level checks, made to overcome resistance, and knowledge arcana checks. Um, and then seeker magic, um, which has to deal with applying meta magic feats. And that's the seeker. Very similar to the oracle, a little bit different, more magical oriented, I feel like. Um, but yeah, this is the sorcerer. This is the sorcerer. I think they're cool, they're fun. I love bloodline powers. Um, I just don't make a lot of charisma based casters, but I think this, this could be a fun route to play. Again, Serpent and Undead are king bloodlines. King of bloodlines. Um, best ones for sure. But yeah, whether you're a new or a veteran player of this game or CRPGs or the tabletop version of Pathfinder, I hope you're enjoying being a part of this world. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. If you haven't checked out Call of the Wild on the Nexus, go check it out. It's made by mod author Holic92. It's the best mod for this game, without a doubt, because of all the amazing things that it adds. And uh, feel free to check out any of my other videos. Subscribe um, for more videos and eventual Let's Play content that I'm going to be releasing. I have all the links to all of my mods that I use in my game in the description below. So check that out and have an awesome day and I will catch you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.